Are you looking to save $10,000 in a year? It may seem like a big chunk of change, but with some simple adjustments in your daily habits and a bit of discipline, you can achieve this financial goal. And like all seemingly huge goals, it pays to break it down. $10,000 a year works out to $833 a month, or $27.40 a day. Now it's looking a little more achievable. So we've now got our daily target. How do we achieve it? Let's get into our 9-step plan. Number 1. Set your financial goals. The first step in reaching the 10K mark is by setting a goal and writing it down. Setting goals in general are a great motivator for getting things done. When you have a specific goal and a specific dollar figure in mind, such as saving for a down payment on a home or paying off debt, you'll be more motivated to save money, and writing it down will make it tangible and real, rather than just keeping it in your head. It also helps you focus on as well as remember your goals better. You can just write them down on a piece of paper and put them on your refrigerator. So you see them and are reminded of them every day. Begin by thinking about what you want to achieve financially before setting goals. Next, divide your objectives into smaller, more attainable tasks. This is how we earlier arrived at the $27.40 daily goal. But this applies for anything else that you're trying to achieve as well. Financial or non-financial. Number 2. Track your expenses. The next step towards saving money is to know where your hard-earned cash is going. Tracking your expenses will help you identify areas where you are overspending. And it will also give you an idea of how much money you can save every month. There are several apps and tools available that can help you track your expenses, such as Mint or PocketGuard. These apps automatically track your expenses and categorize them, so you can easily see where your money is going. Or if you're looking for a slightly lower tech way, there's always the trusty Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. There's a bit more effort involved in these as you need to manually enter your expenses regularly. But that's not an insurmountable obstacle by any means. If you regularly pay for things electronically, such as with a debit card, you'll probably be able to download your payment history from your bank, which will be a big help too. Number 3. Set a budget. Once you know where your money is going, it's time to set a budget. Creating a budget will help you allocate your money appropriately, and it will also further help you identify areas where you can cut back on expenses. To create a budget, start by listing all your income sources, such as your salary or any side hustles. Then, list all your expenses, including your rent, utilities, groceries, and entertainment. Try to allocate a specific amount of money to each category and make sure that you're not spending more than what you're earning. Budgets are great reference points that you can keep coming back to, if you ever get off track in your savings journey. It's like a spending master plan that you can always refer to, to see where your finances are going astray. Number 3. Get frugal with your expenses. Cutting back on expenses is essential if you want to save money. Look for areas where you can trim and reduce, such as eating out or buying expensive coffee. Instead, try to cook at home and bring your lunch to work. You can also save money by canceling subscriptions that you don't fully use, such as gym memberships or streaming services. Another way to cut back on expenses is by negotiating your bills. Call your service providers and ask if they can offer you a better deal. You may be surprised at how much money you can save by simply negotiating. As providers know that the cost of acquiring a new customer is often a lot more expensive than spending a bit more to keep an existing one from leaving. And if your subscriptions are up for renewal, take the opportunity to shop around for cheaper deals. For many things such as mobile plans or streaming services, it's a buyer's market with plenty of competition. All of which is great news for us consumers, since prices tend to get slashed. Number 4. Use cashback, deals or voucher apps. Cashback or deals apps can help you save money while you're spending. These apps offer cashback or rewards for shopping at specific stores or buying specific products. The savings may seem small, but they can add up quickly over time. 
you can also keep an eye out for discounts or voucher deals that can save you 10%, 20% or even more. Some popular cashback apps include Ibotta, Rakuten, and Dosh. These apps offer cashback on purchases made in store or online. And some even offer a sign-up bonus, so you can start saving right away. A word of caution though, be extra careful to only use these for things that you actually need to buy. It's easy to fall into the trap of taking the offers and end up buying stuff you don't really need. Number 5. Start a side hustle. If you want to save $10,000 in a year, you may need to increase your income. Starting a side hustle can be an excellent way to earn some extra cash. And it can also be a fun way to pursue your passions. There are several side hustle ideas you can consider, such as pet sitting, freelance writing, or selling handmade products. Look for opportunities that align with your skills and interests, and don't be afraid to try new things. There are plenty of opportunities online too. Making videos on YouTube, flipping things on Facebook Marketplace or any other online marketplaces. Or doing copywriting on Fiverr are all possible. If you're looking for something that is more digital in nature, check out the link in the description for some free training that can get you started. Don't feel pressured that you need to make a fortune with your side hustles either. Remember, the goal is to save just $27.40 a day. If you end up making more than that, great. But don't get overwhelmed by setting too big an income target for you to achieve. Even $5 or $10 a day will set you on your way. Number 6. Automate your savings. Automating your savings is an excellent way to make sure that you're saving money every month. Set up an automated transfer from your checking account to your savings account every payday. This way, you won't forget to save money, and you won't be tempted to spend it. Make sure that you set the auto transfer to the day that your salary usually gets credited into your account. So that it's one of the first things that your income is used for. After a while, you won't even realize that these transfers are taking place. And you'll get used to spending a lower amount of disposable income. And your savings will be quietly growing in the background on autopilot. Edging ever closer towards that five-figure total. Number 7. Use a high-interest savings account. Banks are always trying to get customers to open accounts and deposit cash, and as a result, High interest rate or high yield savings accounts are usually plentiful. These accounts offer higher interest rates than traditional savings accounts. Which means that you'll earn more money on your savings. They often come from internet only or digital banks, which don't have branches. Because of this, they offer high interest rates to attract customers, which is something that you should take full advantage of. In the US, some popular high interest savings accounts include Ally Bank, and Marcus by Goldman Sachs. But these are available anywhere digital banks exist, which is pretty much all around the world. Coupling this with automated savings that we talked about earlier is a great way to make your money work harder for you. Number 9. Avoid temptation. Avoiding temptation is essential if you want to save money. This means not going to the mall if you know you'll be tempted to buy something or not browsing online stores if you know you'll be tempted to make a purchase. It's easier said than done, but it is extremely important. One way to avoid temptation is to remove yourself from situations that may lead to overspending. For example, if you know that happy hour with coworkers will lead to an expensive night out, with dinner and drinks. Decline the invitation this time round. There's always next time. Another good way of swerving temptation is to not buy anything without a list. This means that your purchases are always thought through beforehand, and you avoid buying things on a whim. You can start by ensuring that your next visits to the supermarket are always accompanied by a grocery list. Check out these videos next, on the best tips and tricks to help you save even more.